Welcome back to K9 Q&A and on today's video we're going to be answering a couple more questions from you guys. Welcome back to Femria Canine Training. If you are new here, my name's Will, I'm a canine behaviorist and I'm the founder of FemriaCanineLeaders.com. This is my wonderful wife, Rachel, and on today's video, she's gonna ask a couple of questions that you guys have sent over, over on Instagram, and we're gonna dive into a little bit of detail and hopefully help you out wherever we can. So without further ado, let's dive straight into it and Rachel, take it away with the very first question. Okay, uh, the first question is, uh, is it okay to let your pup walk ahead of you on a lead? Can it encourage them to be or feel dominant? To feel dominant. So I personally always advise people that one of my kind of mandatory obedience um, stages is to have a good heel walk. I think especially because I work with such large powerful garden breeds in particular, it can be an absolute nightmare to have them pull in and it just makes the walking process miserable um you can kind of attest to this can't you yeah. what a pleasure it is to walk a big powerful dog to heel it completely transforms a chore of walking a dog that's not very enjoyable into one of the highlights of the day doesn't it so there's lots of layers that are really important to teaching your dog to walk to heel in terms of dominance this is one of those areas that's like super debated with a lot of people saying that dominance doesn't exist whatsoever and then any kind of pack structured walk is complete nonsense i kind of i'm not militant in the dominance world but i do believe that there's kind of hierarchies and i do that's why i always talk about kind of calm consistent leadership as opposed to alpha or dominance and i do think a dog that walks to heel nicely by your side um, is a good reflection of your leadership and i always recommend that people should walk kind of head up chest up and you're leading the walk with a dog that's looking to you for guidance and direction now if the dog's out in front of you pulling not only is it just not a very nice experience but that dog then isn't looking up to you for guidance and direction regardless of whether you're bothered about or believe in dominance anyway so i think there's so many benefits to having a dog that walks nicely to heel and isn't out in front of you regardless of the dominance argument i do think there's something to the kind of structure and relational um, argument of walking with a dog um but on top of that, even if you took that out of the equation, I still believe that absolutely everybody should have a dog that walks nicely to heel with a loose lead because it's just better for your relationship and it's just a more pleasurable experience, isn't it? Yeah, and you don't keep them to heel like if we're in a situation like not on the road, you would take the, you would always then have them off lead. Yeah, you? yeah, so, so yeah. it's a compromise of both. It's not like you keep them keep them walking to heel across a field you wouldn't do that yeah so when i'm walking my dog on a pavement what i want them to do is associate the lead with walking nicely and calmly to my side if the dog's out pulling and there's tension on the lead you kind of already setting yourself up for failure because you've got no communication not only are they not looking to you for guidance and direction but you then just locked in a tug of war game and depending on how strong you are slash how strong the dog is and that kind of relationship between the two it just becomes a miserable experience. Now, I don't ask people to have kind of competition level um, walking to heel with kind of their nose glued in your pocket. I just want a nice loose lead with them being to my side. If they're a few inches in front, I don't mind. If they're a few inches behind or quite a bit behind, I don't mind. And then obviously when we're out on fields and stuff, I'll take the lead off and the dog can go and roam, providing that they've got a good recall, which is another one of the areas of kind of my mandatory basic obedience that all dogs can get. So I, I, would, I would recommend don't get wrapped up too much in kind of the dominance worry. Um, just do it for the sake of good obedience and good relationship because it's good for your dog. It's a pleasurable experience for them and it's just good for you. And it kind of looks awesome as well, doesn't it? Yeah. How often we'll be driving and we'll see, you. I'll drive past somebody and you see them having their arm pulled out of the socket and I just kind of feel bad for them because they're not having a lovely experience. But on the flip side, if we drive past somebody and they've got a big dog walking to heel, um, it just looks awesome, doesn't yeah. it? And I'm like, oh, check them out. Good for them. That looks amazing. It's just be on that side of the team, not on the having your arm pulled out of the socket side of the team. That was good, wasn't it? Right. Cool. Yeah. so by the way guys if you do want to ask us any questions and be featured on this kind of q a series that we're going to try and do three a week now aren't we we've kind of wrapped <laughs> up a lot of big projects over the last few weeks that have now freed us up with time to be able to film more of these so if you want to ask questions it's all done over on instagram isn't it you put a story up yeah a couple of days before we're filming i'll put a story up yeah so she'll put a story up and then it allows you i don't have instagram but it allows you to 
comment back and then you save them yeah. all yeah cool and then she plucks them out at random and asks me why we're filming so make sure you come and follow us at Fenrir Canine Leaders yeah. cool come and follow us come and say hello if you've got any messages you can ping them in Rachel picks them up but then you always ask me don't you and then yeah. uh, often times at 9 o'clock at night I get a phone given to me saying well I need you to answer all these DMs so then I do sit and reply to as many as we can so Instagram's a place to come and have a chat with us and to come and ask us any questions to be featured in this Q&A but with that said let's dive into question number two of this video Okay, so second question, a little bit different. Um, do you think you should adopt a dog or buy one to give it the adventure of a lifetime? And it says, by the way, keep up great vids. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I'm <laughs> glad you like them. Um, adopting versus, so there's that kind of adopt, don't shop. There's again, with anything like this, there's people that are just militant with their beliefs, aren't they? I don't have a problem with people buying puppies. I have a problem with people giving up dogs, sending dogs to shelters, having dogs put down. That would be where I find it difficult for to For behaviour reasons, yeah, um, not... For, yeah, if it was someone had passed away or someone fell ill, yeah. there's obviously always reasons for it. But if um, through kind of negligence of an owner that goes to a shelter, that would be where I've got a problem. I've got no issue in people buying puppies, especially like we do it for our situation because we've got very young children. And here in the UK, a shelter just won't allow you to adopt a dog. No if you've got young children i don't i think it's a little bit different in the states We've they might looked be into it before yeah. so they've always said um i think even the dogs that could be like the most friendly they say no children under eight but most of them are like teen you've got to have teenage yeah. children before you can adopt dogs and so. even if i was to go in and be like try and kind of look i'm a, I'm a canine behaviorist look check out my youtube channel kind of lean on that it's still like nope we don't do it i think it's like insurance stuff isn't yeah. it and they don't want to get kind of caught up in that problem which is difficult because if we ever go to a shelter i'd come back with nine dogs at a time <laughs> so but there's there's obviously situations where you can have a puppy and again there's no issue with that whatsoever so my advice really is to kind of assess your personal situation um assess what would fit best with your lifestyle i think if you have your heart set on one or the other it's definitely interesting i will say that adopting dogs um, is an incredible thing to do it, there's so many in shelters you know that everything that kind of we're doing here is to try and stop the amount of dogs ending up in shelters but i don't think buying puppies is necessarily the cause i think there's a bigger wider issue which is why we kind of focus more on ideal breed selection and how to become high level mm. canine leaders because i think that that is what is going to solve the problem um, adopting dogs is fantastic though and, and either way it's an incredible adventure um, i don't think there's necessarily an issue um, with one or the other just address what you think would suit you best now if you go for a puppy because you just want some insta bangers and you think it's really cute to have a puppy and that's the only reason then i would suggest maybe thinking a little bit more and kind yeah. of going past that kind of just that base level and i will also say having a puppy is really difficult i think people especially first time owners really underestimate how difficult having a puppy is it's like having a a zero to two year old child isn't it all at once squashed into one it, it's very difficult so i think if you're a busy person you're a young person with an active social life you're kind of climbing corporate ladders working a yeah. lot then adopting a dog would probably be better because you can get a dog that's past all of that craziness especially that's as a puppy. well because not every dog in the shelter has a behavioral issue mm -hmm. in fact the majority don't the majority will be well trained and yeah mm -hmm. potentially they've come from owners who have passed away or who have moved away mm -hmm. or something like that and so there are amazing dogs yeah, out there everywhere dying for a good home but i think um the other thing to sort of think about is in terms of like breed selection like like will said are you getting a puppy because it's cute but at the same time it's about choosing the best breed and some maybe perhaps if you're looking at a shelter you might not have as wide of a choice of breed mm -hmm. and i think that's something to consider as well you don't don't just kind of go to a shelter and pick the one that looks the best because you're still going to end up with the same problems that someone might have getting a puppy yeah yeah so i'd say that kind of is a perfect summary there's yeah. lots to it's it's not one of those it's not a clean cut argument like some people want to make it out to be um and like i say i fully support adopting dogs and i'm okay with people getting puppies providing their in the right stage of their life and prepared to do so so again and um, we would totally do both if we yeah could. yeah 100 percent. you guys know my dream is to grow this to a stage where we can buy a farm um, and have a hundred rescue dogs and rehabilitate them and rehome some i say rehome some but there's 
are very much doubt by the time I've rehabilitated I'm not dogs. A I'd be bad find it difficult to let them go. So we're gonna have a uh, hundred dogs roaming around on our farm. But yeah, I think um thank you so much for watching by the way guys remember come over to instagram if you want to chat with us the comments are enabled on this channel so get involved down in the comment section below as well um, i appreciate you watching it like the video subscribe if you're new here notification bell what do other youtubers say at this stage what does texas say comment yeah. down below. yeah comment down below as our four-year-old likes to say he's watching far too much youtube <laughs> lockdown problems well thank you so much guys we'll see you on the next episode of the fenrir canine training i nearly said no fenrir canine training see you soon <laughs>